As a heads up, this class is being recorded for posting on YouTube. So, <clears throat> welcome to uh, 443. I'm Professor Joe Perfetti. I'll be the professor for this semester. Uh, this class is Applied Equity Analysis. Um, we have 164 people registered across the four sections, which is about 40 odd people per section. We only have uh, 32 computers in each room, so for now you might have to share a computer with one of your, your peers. So, um, again, I've been teaching this class now for nine years, but uh, this is my part-time job, believe it or not. And when I'm not teaching on campus, I'm actually working in the real world with a bunch of companies. So, uh, good news, bad news for you. But basically what it means is that I'm only on campus during class, and I teach classes on Monday and Wednesday. Now, I have four sections that run concurrently from 11, 12, 32, and 3.30, uh, but nonetheless, this is the only time you're going to find me on campus. And likely, if I'm talking about office hours, you're talking about to me either before or after a class. Now, <clears throat> I have three TAs. These are my undergrad TAs. They, uh, all three of them took this class in the spring of 2017. Uh, they understand the content. They were good students. And they will be doing not only all the grading, but they will also be having most of the office hours. So all three of them have office hours on Thursday. Now, I, I think I'm actually talking to Section 301. You got Section 301? So your specific TA, or no, your 401, is uh, George Lee. So he'll be your TA, but you're welcome to talk to any of the TAs because they, they all know it's, it's similar content. And again, um, this is my email address. This is my cell phone. works on my iPhone. And... That is my office, but as I said, primarily the TAs will be who you'll see in the office, and this is available online. On oh. <coughs> so, excuse me. <coughs> so the class is called Applied Equity Analysis. <clears throat> the key is the word applied. That this class will probably be far different than most of what you've taken at Smith, because this class is probably the most real world of any class. So we don't use like Harvard Business School case studies because I don't care what happened in 2007. It's all about what's happening in kind of real time in the real world today. <clears throat> so you'll need to kind of pay attention to current events and we'll be constantly talking about real world stuff. So just as a for example, <clears throat> um, why are avocados cheaper today at Whole Foods than they were on Sunday? Oh, good. Got some answers. Yeah. That's right, because Amazon closed its deal, Amazon now owns Whole Foods, and Amazon cut the prices on several products. So that's the point. Uh, Uber has a new CEO. Where'd they come from? Expedia. Great. So Expedia CEO, and Expedia's actually had a pretty good run, and uh, that company is now the guy in charge of Uber. Hopefully it brings some stability to that company going forward. So it's just you have to pay attention to what's going on in the real world. Matter of fact, September 12th. That was a headline I saw about 20 minutes ago. September 12th. iPhone launch event. So there's going to be some action going on in Apple stock price. That'll be one of the days that it's going to be happening around. They're predicting that they're going to actually launch it at the Steve Jobs Theater in Apple's new spaceship campus. So they're, they're trying to finish it because it's actually not done yet. So they're probably ramping up the next couple weeks, a lot of pressure there. But <clears throat> so nonetheless, when we say applied, as I said, it's going to be a real world class dealing with real world information. The other thing is we're going to heavily use Bloomberg. We are the number one school in the world for Bloomberg and higher education in terms of number of terminals. We have 60 terminals at the University of Maryland. I teach at Wharton. They have eight, just to put that into perspective. There is no other school out there that has a teaching lab like this with over 30 terminals in one room that's used as a teaching lab. That's just an investment that Maryland has made. Commend our dean for making this investment. So <clears throat> the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to become Bloomberg certified. And if you're not familiar with Bloomberg, <clears throat> Bloomberg is really expensive software. Costs almost $25,000 per user per year minimum two-year license, and that's just for the base model. The cost for you attending this class, zero. So you're going to actually get an advantage of using software that's used in the real world by real professionals in this class for the next three months at no cost to you. And there's a tremendous advantage. Matter of fact, 
one of the advantages will occur on Monday, September 11th, mandatory attendance day for all students. Bloomberg is sending four people to do training specifically for this class on Monday, September 11th. Now they're gonna have a recruiting event at the end of that day, and the people that are doing the training are the people that are hosting the recruiting event. And they're specifically recruiting juniors to be interns and seniors that are looking for full-time jobs. So it's your opportunity not only to learn from Bloomberg, but simultaneously if you're looking for a career or an internship, these are the people that can get you hired. So you'll have that opportunity as well <clears throat> by being in the class. And unlike the people that are just going to the reception, you'll have the opportunity to spend class time with them uh, as well, asking them some questions. So <clears throat> some things we're going to do for you uh, to kind of make this class a little bit more differentiated. So <clears throat> a couple more things. <clears throat> the goal of the class <clears throat> is to start to train you to think like a sell side analyst. So basically how to write a valuation research report. Target stock prices, do the valuation, do the multiples analysis, do the historical financial analysis, do a um, <clears throat> basically a competitive analysis, industry analysis. We're going to talk about all those concepts. So by the end of the semester, you'll be pretty fluent in how to put one of those together. And there'll be a group project, which will make a presentation on of a real world company where we'll be a practicing and applying that. Okay. So <clears throat> the other thing about this class is a couple years ago, uh, Maryland, specifically the Smith School, was flagged as part of its business school certification at having a deficiency in ethics training. So randomly, the ethics training certification for the school was assigned to this class. So not saying that you shouldn't already have ethics if you're doing valuation, but there is an ethics component to this class, which is just important to the school certification. So there will be an ethics assignment, it's actually two assignments, that are due on Friday, September 15th that you must complete so that the school can say that we've certified everybody on ethics training. So that's one other component that will be part of this class that you'll have to complete. So <clears throat> I'm recording this class right now. You'll find that most of the lectures, not all, but most of them will be recorded and placed on YouTube. I started doing it a few years ago for people that were missing classes. But even the people that were attending the classes said it'd be great if we had it for reference. So generally, I'll record them, post them on YouTube, and I'll give you a link on Elms after the class to have it available. So in terms of the textbook, uh, there's only one textbook for the class. It's the sixth edition evaluation. <clears throat> and I'm assuming that, and you'll see on the syllabus, there's a lot of readings that come out of the textbook. I'm assuming you're doing the readings, and I'm assuming you understand the content. So <clears throat> if you don't, please ask about it in class, but otherwise, I'm assuming that's pretty straightforward and I'm building on top of that. Now I'll also tell you, even though we're not covering it in class, anything in the textbooks will be fair game on any of the exams we do. And as I said, assignments will presume that you've read the textbook. So nonetheless, textbook, sixth edition, that's the only real cost to the class with the exception of a simulation called Stock Track. So next Wednesday, <clears throat> you'll be randomly assigned into teams of six or seven people. So given the size of the section, there'll probably be seven teams of six to seven people. And so <clears throat> basically, 35% of your semester grade will be two group project assignments. And I will tell you that last semester, it was a little bit of a disaster for a couple of the sections. And one of the sections, their group project cost them a letter grade. The other section, their group project cost them two letter grades. So I'm going to do my best to tell you up front how to not make it a disaster for you. Because what I tell you is that the group projects go throughout the semester and next Wednesday you're gonna be put in groups and you should immediately work with your team to know who they are and get involved in the project. And I will tell you that in the spring, in late April, I literally had teams that had never met throughout the entire semester, didn't do anything, and went to the final parts of the group project not knowing who their people, their peers were. And, and literally, I felt bad for a couple of students, but, but I mean, it literally was the difference between getting a C and an A in the class because they didn't work well as a group and they didn't even know who their group was. So I'm just letting you know, it's a 30 year grade. It's gonna be very important to start the group work next week. And you really need to start working on getting together with your teammates. I don't know how else to say that. It's really important to this class because it's a 30 year grade. One of the group projects is a simulation which will open up in a week and a half called Stock Track. 
cost thirty dollars. One of your team members on your group will have to buy a stock pre stock track license. It's basically a simulation where it's a real world trading simulation where you'll be given a hypothetical portfolio of a million dollars, and <clears throat> over three months you can buy or sell equities, you can short or go long, and you're competitively graded. So basically, at the end of the semester, the team with the portfolio with the highest value gets an A. The team with the lowest portfolio value gets an F, and it's just pure relative performance. So that's stock track, and that's 10% of your semester grade. So before you get too nervous about this, the good news is if this were the real world, you'd actually lose your job. So here, you only have the difference between an A and an A minus in the class. But nonetheless, stock track will be competitive, and that starts up soon, and that is one of your group projects. So <clears throat> the other group project will be right after the midterm, and the midterm will be the second week of October. I'm going to give you an industry, and then within that industry, you will pick a real company, and then you'll do a group project valuation on that company. And the dates that matter in this class are September 11th, which is a mandatory attendance day, because Bloomberg's going to be here all day to train you, and December 4th and 6th. Those three days, you have to be here. Rest of the semester, it's your choice. You're adults. You spend a lot of tuition. If you really don't want to come to the class that you've signed up for, I can't make you. But for those three classes, you need to be here. And you really shouldn't miss them. If you miss any one of the three classes, you lose 5% of your semester grade for each class missed. Right? And the reason why is because on December 4th and 6th, you'll be doing your group project presentations. Right? And so that's going to be important to be here. Now, again, two semesters ago, <clears throat> when we did Fast Casual, and people did like McDonald's and Burger King and Yum. I actually brought in two people from Chick-fil-A, the treasurer and the VP of finance, and they presented to Chick-fil-A their analysis on the fast casual industry. I brought in a senior person at Merck from their supply chain business, and when they did pharma, they presented to Merck their analysis of pharma, including one of the teams which actually did their own analysis on Merck, which they presented to Merck. And I thought that that was really cool. So... Last semester, the project teams, most of them were okay, but some of them were so god-awful, I decided not to embarrass the school or myself, and I didn't invite anybody in for the group project presentations. So <clears throat> I'm just telling you, so call this a carrot, is that I tell you, I, I really work with a lot of companies in the real world. I have good relationships with them. Sometimes they're very excited to hear what the group projects are and actually listen to what you have to say, but it depends on how much work you do over the next three months. Like if you put in a decent amount of effort, you're working hard, and I think you're actually going to add value, I'll make those December 4, 6, some real world companies to actually talk to. If you basically put the minimal amount of work in, you don't care, and you half-ass it, I'm not going to burn the school's credibility or mine bringing people in. So essentially, I'll just transparently say that. But regardless, mark those two dates in the calendar, because those will be presentations, and you need to be here for both days, presenting or not. Okay. And hopefully we'll have some guests on those days as well, depending on how the semester goes. All right. The other thing you have to do this semester is you have to get Bloomberg certified. So Bloomberg has something called BMC, which stands for Bloomberg Market Concepts. So in a Bloomberg terminal, and this is a Bloomberg lab, the school has 60 terminals. 30-something of them are in this room. Okay. To be certified, you have to be on a Bloomberg terminal. Okay, So this is a Bloomberg terminal on my laptop. Now here's the thing. If you go to Bloomberg.com, you can actually log in from Bloomberg on their website and download and install the software. But when you do, it's going to say call customer service. You had trouble logging in because you're missing a serial number. And when you call them, they're going to ask how you want to pay the $25,000. Okay, so, and they're going to sign up you up to a two-year contract. So you're actually committing to $50,000. So unless you come from a ridiculously rich family and you just don't care, you probably are not going to have the software installed outside of this classroom. If you use the Smith terminals in this room, free. Okay, so you can't install it outside of the room without spending a ton of money. So in order to be Bloomberg certified, you'll either use this classroom or there's a lab on the first floor, I think it's like 1408 or 1406. But I'll tell you that that lab, which only has like 10 or 12 terminals, is always busy and the entire school's down there because you're competing with everybody else in the school. This classroom is like a bad secret. 
a lot of people don't know that this is a Bloomberg lab. So outside of teaching on Mondays and Wednesdays, the rest of the week, this lab usually is pretty open. So to do your homework assignments, you'll need Bloomberg terminals. To do certification, you need Bloomberg terminals. Most likely be doing work in this lab. So specifically, <clears throat> to get certified, they have something called Bloomberg Market Concepts, BMC. And they have four self-study course modules to teach you how to use the terminal. Economic indicators, currencies, fixed income, equities. I am only requiring two of the four for the classroom certification. Economic indicators, equities. You don't have to do currencies and fixed income. Right? However, if you'd like an actual certificate of certification from Bloomberg, a PDF and a badge you can put on your LinkedIn profile, you need to complete all four. Okay? So it is your option. You can see the estimated time. It's four hours to become certified in equities and economic indicators. It's another four hours for currencies and fixed income. If you choose, it's at your option and you want an actual Bloomberg certification, you need to do all four. All right? But by September 15th, Friday, you must do the, at least two of them, equity and economic. Questions about that? But you won't actually get a certificate of certification from Bloomberg. And by the way, if you actually work in the financial community, this will be one of the first things they'll do. You get hired by Goldman Sachs, they're going to send you to Bloomberg training. So it, having a certification does give you a leg up in the interview process. But I'll also warn you, don't tell a potential recruiter that you're Bloomberg certified unless you actually were Bloomberg certified because they're going to start asking you questions and they're going to quickly realize you weren't certified. So the nice thing about the semester is by the end of the semester, you're going to use this software enough that you're going to be pretty fluent in Bloomberg. So nonetheless, that is the certification. You'll have to take it through the, the terminal. You can take it at multiple points in time. So you don't have to do it all at once, but you do have to complete it by Friday, September 15th. Okay, questions about that? By the way, to be certified, <clears throat> you'll basically watch some videos, read some stuff, take a multiple choice exam. You have to get 75% correct or they won't allow you to say you were certified. And you can only take it twice. So if you don't pass twice, then you can't take it again. And then you won't be able to be certified and you'll lose 5% of your semester grade. I only say that because I've been using Bloomberg for a while. And a couple years ago, I went into this and I just went straight to the multiple choice and I didn't read the, or watch the videos. I failed miserably both times, right? Because the way they do the certification is it's not really about knowing the tool. It's about testing you on the things that were in the videos and in the readings. And I'm just telling you, if you don't read, then you'll have no idea how to answer the questions, even if you know the terminal. So it's not the best way to teach you the certification, it's just the way they do it. And so I'm just giving you fair warning on that one, that really it will take you an hour or three hours to do this. Because if you just go straight to the multiple choice, odds are you will not pass. And if you fail twice, you don't get a chance to take it a third time. Yes, sir. Question? Okay. <clears throat> All right. So back to this. A couple more things. The grading on any individual exam or any individual assignment really doesn't matter in this class. Because to get a grade in this class, you are accumulating points. And there's 100 potential points this semester. To get an A minus, you need 90 points. Okay? To get a B minus, you need 80 points. C minus, 70 points. As a finance and accounting major, anything under 70 is failing. So you need at least 70 to, to pass the class. And the points are divided across these assignment groups. So again, 30% of your grade, 30 of the 100 points, will be 12 homework assignments. There will be one a week starting next week for the next 12 weeks. Okay? So that's the other thing in terms of expectations for this class. There will be at least one assignment every single week this semester graded homework. In addition, Five points for the Bloomberg certification. Each assignment's worth two points for homework, and then the rest are the ethics assignments that you have to do, okay? 15% will be the midterm exam. It'll be two parts, two Mondays. First Monday is, I think, October 2nd, <clears throat> part A of the midterm. Basically, the exams in this class are open book, open notes. You'll have to use a computer, right? And you'll actually need Excel. So <clears throat> I don't believe in testing people on memorization. I can't tell you the last time that I had to memorize a formula. If I don't know it, 
I actually want to look it up because I don't want to screw it up. And I apply the same rules here in the class. So I'm not going to test you on memory, but I am going to test you on application. And if you haven't read it and you don't understand it, you're going to struggle on the exams. So that's why I said it's in your interest. If you don't understand concepts, ask about them during class. Right? So that's going to be the midterm, 15%. By the way, the final, which will be given out the last day of class as a take home, is 20%. Stock track is 10% of your grade. I will break stock track into two six week sprints. So you'll be graded on the first six weeks, ending in sometime mid October. So it's performance relative to your peers in this section through mid October, and then we'll start again for the second half of the semester. And the way it'll work is if you're in first place, by a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars, you get five points. If you're in second place, four, third place, probably four, fourth place, or yeah, fourth place, three, three, two, one, etc. And it's just competitively graded based on how you do against your peers. And then we'll start it up again for the second half of the semester. The other 25% will be that group valuation project that I talked about. Attendance policy. I mentioned it before. I'll just say it again. Besides the three mandatory attendance days that I mentioned, the rest of it is up to you. It's your tuition dollars. I can't force you to come to a class you don't want to. We are in the drop ad period, so if this class is not for you, we're already overbooked, so feel free to drop. But basically, <clears throat> I'll let you know that... Odds are, if you show up, you do the work, you're going to get an A. I, I know the grade distribution historically, but that's the point. I'm not here about the letter grades. What I'm here to do is I'll tell you at the end of the semester, not only will you be Bloomberg certified, you have a better understanding of how things work in the real world, and I think it'll actually help you in, with the content. But in order to do it, you got to actually do the assignments. And so that's the point. If you really don't want to do an assignment a week for the next semester, this class will not work out well for you. So I'll just let you know in advance. Um, but nonetheless, I'm not going to baby you. I'm not going to force you to generally show up if you don't want to. Uh, in terms of the last thing I'll mention is the late assignment policy. Because, again, this became an issue last semester. I don't know why. So I'm just going to state it very clearly up front at the beginning of the semester. So, again, I'm going to treat you like an adult, which means very similar to the real world. If you're late for an assignment, it's just not going to be graded. Okay. So basically, there's going to be a very clear deadline and when the assignments do, if you're late, then don't bother turning it in because we're just not going to give you credit for it. We're not going to grade it. And what you'll find, and the TAs went through this with me last semester, so they have this philosophy, is basically we are flexible before deadlines. We're not flexible after deadlines. So for example, this morning, I went to post lecture note one, which is on Canvas in the file section if you want to download it because we're about to go through that material for today in the file section, but Canvas was down. There was some kind of security login issue. I couldn't get in, right? So generally for homework assignments, with the exception of next week, because next week is Labor Day, assignments for the homework will generally be given out on Wednesday, and they'll be due on Monday, Monday at 10 a.m. for all sections, right? So if it's 10 a.m., and like it was this morning, and I can't log into Elms because it's a security issue, I send an email to the TAs or myself, documenting the time. Hey, Professor Perfetti, I can't log into Canvas. I'm going to have trouble submitting the assignment. I wanted to let you know. That, to me, would then give you the flexibility to turn in later the day. You show up at 3.30 in the afternoon and you say, Professor Perfetti, I couldn't log in this morning because Canvas was down. I'll sympathize with you and I'll give you a zero. So just so you understand how it's going to work, before deadlines, flexibility. After deadlines, not flexibility. Okay. And there's a 15-minute grace period associated with the deadlines. So 10 o'clock means you can turn it in up to 10.15 without penalty after that grace period ends unless there's a, you know, I got hit by a car, I'm in a hospital, and I can prove it. Then basically we're going to give you zeros, obviously, just so there's no ambiguity on it. And then I'm going to implement something new this semester that I have not done in the past. So we're going to see how this works. I'm calling it the homework pass. Okay, so everybody gets one homework pass, which you can use at your discretion anytime through the semester to skip a homework assignment and just get the two points of credit. Okay, it doesn't apply to exams and it doesn't <clears throat> apply to Bloomberg certification, but any other assignment, if you don't want to do it, just say homework pass, you just type that in and you get the two points one time throughout the semester. However, can you shut that door in your mind? Come on. The homework pass cannot be used retroactively. So if you forgot about the assignment, 
you blew the deadline, you got a zero because you forgot about it, I'm not going to let you use the homework pass for that. So the homework pass still applies to the same deadline as the original assignment. So you have up until the deadline to say homework pass. It's up to you when you want to use it or use it at all, but nonetheless, I'm going to make that available. That way, when I get the emails that say, oh, you know, we're going to the Sean Mendez concert this weekend and I don't have time to, to get to the, to the class to use, and you laugh because I actually went to the Sean Mendez concert last week. I was one of 10 males in the entire place, probably one of 10 people above the age of 18. But nonetheless, if you are in that situation and you're dragged to the Sean Mendes concert and you can't get to the Bloomberg Lab, the homework passes for you. Okay, because that's not the type of assignment I'm generally going to extend. But nonetheless, it's your choice how you want to do it during the semester. Yes? How would you put D instead of So, what you'll do is when you type in, there'll be a submission through Elms, or I'll say submit a file, homework pass. Just write it on there, homework pass. You can just, you know, empty Word document, homework pass. The TAs will figure that out. Okay. But, and as a, this is new, so we'll figure this out as it goes through the semester. And worst case scenario, you can email it in to the TAs before the deadline. I'm using a homework pass in this assignment. But just make it clear that you're doing it. Okay. Questions about anything? Okay. All right. And then finally, special needs. If you have any special needs, like for example, you're on a sports team or a club and you're traveling on behalf of the school, or you have a DSS form for time and a half or double time in an exam, something like that, talk to me. We'll do our best to make accommodations. Right? And then the last thing I'll mention about the syllabus, then we're going to jump into lecture note one, is pretty straightforward on when the assignments are. I did post on Elms the due dates of all the assignments. They're blank, but at least you know when they are and when they're due to plan accordingly. And what I will say, is that there are a couple of times during the semester where I just have work outside the university that I can't change and I may not have, be able to have class. I tried to identify a couple of those, but in lieu of those days, you will have what we'll call a Bloomberg lab. So what I mean by that is that there will be an in-class assignment. So the first one is on September 13th, where I will not do a lecture, but you will have class time to do something that will require Bloomberg. So even though there's no class, you'll still have to probably come to campus in order to do the assignment because you won't be able to do Bloomberg outside the classroom. So there will be a few Bloomberg labs throughout the semester. So just giving you a heads up. And specifically the reason for September 13th is because by September 15th you have to be Bloomberg certified which requires time at the terminal so I'm giving you the class time on the 13th to do that and your ethics certifications are due on the 15th as well. So I'm giving you time during class to work on those ethics certifications. So that's going to be September 13th. There will be no lecture on that day. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention very quickly is the week of the 18th is going to be the most difficult week content-wise of the semester. So what's unique about this class is we're using the McKinsey approach to evaluation. It's only taught at three places. It's taught at McKinsey, it's taught at Wharton, and it's taught here. Nobody else teaches this approach. So <clears throat> what's specific to their approach that's different is they reorganize accounting statements into an economic format based on Modigliani Miller. It's something you will not have been familiar with. We're going to introduce how they do that the week of September 18th. Right? And that's going to be very important for the way we do valuations and analysis later on the semester. It's a little bit extra work up front. But what you're going to find is your evaluations are cleaner, better, and easier to analyze and understand. So there's a benefit to this work. But nonetheless, you're going to struggle because you're used to accounting and you're not used to these statements. And I'll just let you know that part one of the midterm on October 2nd is going to be, here's some accounting statements, convert them into the McKinsey format. That's the first half of the midterm. That's 7.5% of your semester grade. So basically, we're going to get that out of the way early, and that's going to be another core thing that we're going to use all semester. So two things. One, Bloomberg certification, because you're going to use that terminal just about every week. And second is going to be the reorganizing the financial statements because we're going to use that new format throughout the whole semester. All right, questions about that? Great, let's go to the content. Lecture one. Four cornerstones of value creation. 